This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, everyone. I'm Cameron Harris. We love making the show available to you free of charge, and you can help keep it that way by making a contribution to our Karma Jar. To learn more, visit our website. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Game On. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the game Dragon Age Origins from BioWare. Now, Dragon Age Origins is a role-playing game which is set in the world of Ferelden, a world that's similar to a, sort of a Lord of the Rings style uh, universe. It's got dwarves, elves, and humans all coexisting in one nation. There are creatures in Ferelden called Darkspawn. They are essentially very evil creatures that are bent on conquering the world. Now, at the time of Dragon Age, Darkspawn haven't been seen in Ferelden in several centuries, and most people assume that they've been defeated for good. That is not the case, however, as the Darkspawn are getting ready to unleash a blight on the land. A blight is when all of the Darkspawn are led by a creature called an Archdemon to essentially conquer the known world. And it's at this point that your character shows up. Now, I can't give you much more detail than that, because where your character actually starts the game will depend on how you set your character up. You see, before you start the game, you get to customize your character. And I do mean customize. You can be either male or female. You can be a human, an elf, or a dwarf. So you can choose three different races. And you also have three different classes that you can choose from. Warrior, rogue, or mage. Warriors and rogues both use weapons like swords or daggers. A mage, on the other hand, can use magic. Now, once you've made those selections, you can then choose a backstory. But if you're an elf, for example, you'll have multiple choices. Did you grow up in an alienage inside of a human city, or did you grow up in the forest among the Dalish? Now, this will affect where you get inserted into the storyline, whether it's uh, in a human city, whether it's in the forest, the dwarf city of Orzammar, makes a big difference, and that's where your backstory comes in. You're introduced to your character, it explains who you are, what you've been doing, and what's going on with you right now, etc. Today, your elder brother takes up House Kuzlan's banner in service to the crown. Now, regardless of what backstory you choose, the game will always lead to you being recruited as a Grey Warden. Grey Wardens are an ancient line of warriors that have always protected the land against the Darkspawn and the Blight. The beginning of the game ends with a massive battle against the Darkspawn, where the Grey Wardens and the human armies are defeated. Now, after that battle, you and the character Alistair are the only two Grey Wardens surviving. It's like a party. We could all stand in a circle and hold hands. That would give the Darkspawn something to think about. It's up to you to go out, unite Ferelden against the Blight, stop a potential civil war, and eventually stop the Blight and defeat the Archdemon. Well, now that we know the basic storyline of the game, let's get into combat. Now, combat in Dragon Age Origins works very similarly to the way it does in most other role-playing games. You select an enemy, and you hit the attack button. Your character will then go over to that enemy and start attacking them automatically. Now, the speed at which you attack, the damage you inflict, the chances you have of hitting your target is entirely based on your skills and talents. Now, when I say skills and talents, I mean things like strength, dexterity, constitution, willpower, that sort of thing. Those numbers essentially compete with the enemy's numbers and affect how much damage you do, your chances of dodging, etc. Now, if that's all there was to combat in Dragon Age, it would be pretty boring. And that's why you have advanced moves and abilities that you can trigger manually. These might involve a special hit with your weapon, or if you're a mage, it might involve casting a specific type of spell. Now, you don't get to use those all the time, though, because you have to keep an eye on your stamina. Using these special abilities will drain stamina, some more than others, and you have to wait for it to recharge during combat before you can use things again. The combat controls are also very nice. You have one button to select and attack an enemy. In the case of the Xbox, for example, it's the A button. But then the other three buttons on your controller, X, Y, and B, for example, can be assigned to these special abilities. Of course, you're going to have more than six abilities, most likely. So if you hold down the left trigger, the game will pause and pull up the selection wheel. This allows you to choose abilities and attacks, and then target an enemy and select them. This is pretty cool because this also freezes all action no matter what's happening. And this can be a good opportunity to just hold down that trigger, look around, get a sense of the battlefield, and then send out a spell or an attack. Now, over the course of the game, you get to choose other people to join your party, and then you can take up to three of them with you on missions. 
During combat, you can also switch between all of these different characters and control them directly. For example, even though I'm playing as a rogue, I can switch over to my mage and use spells to defeat my enemies. Of course, you can only control one party member at a time, so what happens to the other three that aren't being controlled by you? Well, there are these things called tactics that you can assign to each different party member. There will be a condition, and if that condition is met, then they will automatically execute whatever action you say. For example, a good tactic might be to tell all of your party members that if their health drops below a certain level, automatically use a health potion to heal themselves. And as is the case with most role-playing games, as you earn experience in the world by doing things like defeating enemies or completing quests, you will get to level up your characters. This means adding more points to their strength, constitution, or dexterity, as well as adding more abilities that they can use during combat. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a game by BioWare, and one thing that BioWare is really well known for is having amazing storyline in their games, and Dragon Age is absolutely no exception. It has tons of backstory for you to discover. You can do this by talking to people you meet along your way, or by reading books or finding artifacts. But by far, your biggest source of information is going to come from talking to people. The way conversations work in Dragon Age is the person you're having the discussion with will say something, and then once they're done, you will get a list of dialogue options for you to say. But you don't actually say anything. Instead, you just pick the text you want to say, and the other character will instantly respond. It is rather unfortunate that your character never says anything during a conversation, but it's made up for by the fact that every other character you meet always has dialogue to say. It's written beautifully, and it's just really, really fun to learn more about all these people and learn more about Ferelden. Now let's talk about decisions, because decisions in this game are quite crucial. They will have a significant effect on how the storyline and quests unfold in front of you. For example, let's say you want to play as a good person. This might mean sparing someone at the end of a fight. Thank you. The Maker will surely turn his eyes on you for your mercy. Decisions will also play a huge role in how your party starts to come together. A lot of party members you come across will only join your party if you make certain decisions. For example, there's one party member called Sten who you find imprisoned. You now you have to make a decision. Do you leave him there or do you take a chance and let him join your party? Now some people might argue that the graphics in this game look a bit dated. And while it's true that they're not the most amazing graphics you'll see in a game these days, I don't really mind. They're still incredibly beautiful. There are a lot of details and gorgeous landscapes when you look closely. And you have to keep in mind that this world is simply huge. I mean, if you take a look at the map, there are locations scattered all across this country. And they all have their own unique look, whether it's the human city of Denerim, the Brazilian forest where the elves live, the dwarven city of Orzammar, which is buried deep underneath a mountain. All of these locations have their own look, their own feel, and they're all really gorgeous to look at. They've also done a great job designing the characters in the game. Not just the characters that you play, but the characters you will encounter and connect with over the course of the game. They all have facial expressions, they look very realistic, and it allows you to develop a very personal connection with them. Now the last thing that I want to say about this game is that it does a great job of progressing from the beginning to the end. When you start, you don't have anyone else in your party, you have very basic armor and weapons, but then as you progress through the game, you level up, you get more skill, you get more party members, and you get better equipment. This is one thing that's very fun about Dragon Age is that once you've defeated an enemy, you can actually search them and try and find better equipment or better armor, better weapons. And this makes sure that as the game progresses, the enemies get tougher, but so do you. You might even find magical runes that you can use to affect your weaponry. For example, making it so that your sword is bathed in flame the whole time, or adding electrical damage or cold damage to your weapons. And something else that I love is in addition to the generic equipment, for example, just plain steel daggers or steel chain mail, you also have unique items, unique weapons, and unique armor that you can find or purchase throughout the game. In fact, some of these items are actually made specifically for you. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. So overall, I think Dragon Age is a fantastic game. It's one of my personal favorite role-playing games, and I would definitely recommend you check it out. It's available now on Xbox, PS3, PC, and Mac.
Now, real quick before I go, I do want to tell you guys about the new badge program we have going on at the network. The idea here is that we've designed hundreds of digital badges for you guys to earn by doing things. And we have quite a few for Game On. For example, if you play one of the games that we've reviewed, for example, Dragon Age, you could earn this gamer badge. It's really cool. Definitely check it out on our website. And speaking of our website, that is www.harwoodpodcast.com. Definitely check it out for the badge gallery as well as the show notes for Game On, where I'll have links to where you can pick up Dragon Age for yourself. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me about the show, suggestions for games I should review in the future maybe, you can send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. would love to hear from you guys. Until next time, Game On. <laughs>